a decade ago, I was invited for an on-site interview with one of the biggest companies in my city. It was a huge opportunity and I was super excited about it. So I practiced a lot, thought through every possible question and even planned every detail of my outfit for the day. Finally, the big day arrived and I managed to get ready one hour ahead of the departure time. But there was only a small issue that I hadn't thought about and it was how to get to the interview location. By that time, neither of my roommate nor I have a car, had a car, so the only option was to take the bus. But soon, I realized that it wasn't a wise choice for such a special day. The first scheduled bus didn't show up at all. The next one arrived five minutes late, got stuck in traffic, and finally, I arrived at the office 15 minutes late. I'm sure you can imagine what happened afterward. I was so frustrated and almost forgot everything I had prepared for the interview. And interviewers were disappointed and annoyed. So well, I didn't get the job. My story is only one example of how a lack of mobility can take away opportunities from us. But today, Thanks to the advancement in communication and information technology, this whole story could be totally different. I could use my smartphone to order a car from one of the ride sourcing companies like Uber and Lyft to pick me up from my home and take me to my meeting location on time. Uber and Lyft services, along with car sharing, ride sharing, bike sharing, microtransit, and mobility as a service, belong to a broader mobility family called Innovative Mobility Services, which use communication and Wi-Fi technology to transform mobility into a service. At the Center for Automotive Research, a nonprofit research company located in Ann Arbor, my work is focused on studying these emerging mobility technologies and understanding their potential impacts on our cities. Tonight, I'd like to talk about a few examples of these impacts. Let's start with accessibility. I'm sure if you look for it, you will find a handful of situations in which without a personal car, you wouldn't be able to get to your destination. And it's not always about lack of public transit, but in many cases, access to these public transit stations is hard itself. And this problem has a long history in the field of transportation planning. During the recent years, New mobility technologies have helped a lot to solve the first mile, last mile problem by taking people from their home, work, or any other location to the public transit stations and letting them plan for their trips ahead of the time by choosing from the available mobility options. Safety and efficiency are two other most cited benefits of new mobility technologies. Today, about 90% of car accidents are caused by human error. But on the other side, there are connected and automated vehicle technologies, which are able to drive themselves to a pre-assigned location, find a parking spot, park themselves, or go to another location. These vehicles are designed to follow the driving rules and avoid dangerous situations. There are three main underlying technologies that enable these vehicles to drive safely on the road. The first one is advanced driving assistance systems, with which the vehicle is able to perceive its environment and react safely to the risk. The next one is vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, which enables the vehicle to communicate with the other vehicles on the road so they can know what each other are doing. And then there is vehicle to infrastructure communication. And in this case, the vehicle is syncing with signals, signs, and roadside units to receive information about the road, weather, and traffic condition so it can predict any upcoming challenges on its path. The good news is a few miles away from here at the American Center for Mobility and the University of Michigan, MCD, 
most of these technologies are being tested to allow the safe deployment of connected and automated vehicle technologies in the future. Now, you might ask what would happen to our cities with these new mobility technologies? New mobility technologies align with public transit and more sustainable modes of transportation, like walking and biking, are in a unique position to transform the way we think of mobility and give us the opportunity to reshape the, pla the places we live. Today, cars are the major design element in every consideration when we are planning for our cities, but this has to change. By using new mobility technologies and reducing the number of the vehicles on the road, we will need less parking and road infrastructure in the future. So by freeing up massive urban areas set aside for parking and taking advantage of these redevelopment opportunities, we will be able to transform our cities into more livable, walkable, and bikeable areas. Last but not least, new mobility technologies are aimed at providing mobility for those who cannot drive. Let's travel into the future for a moment. By 2050, 68% of world population will live in cities. And we need to figure out how we are going to move people and goods in and out of these congested areas. Also by 2050, the percentage of population aged 65 years and older is going to increase considerably, which means more people will need mobility services. By using new mobility technologies, these people will be able to move around, to go to visit family and friends or go to their doctor appointments conveniently while keeping their independence. With all of this, I want to leave you with a final thought. New mobility technologies are coming one after the other. But technology without its users doesn't have any meaning. We need to plan and prepare our communities for these incoming technologies. And we need to start thinking about how each of us as citizens can contribute to this mobility revolution to transform our transportation system for the better. The goal is to reach to a point where nobody is deprived from opportunities just because lack of mobility. Thank you.